G'day, how you going? Ian Apples here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my video. I'll just get the size up there first before we get started, and also some colours running up the screen also. Uh, this is going to be a nice tall painting. Now we're going to do a bit of a misty background. Far away it's going to be all misty and coming into slight focus with some beautiful birch trees on their leaf fallen ground. The ground's going to have all leaves fallen and some new ones trying to grow through here. Uh, I haven't done many birch trees that I can remember so We'll do one here and it's going to be a nice painting where people are going to go you know what i reckon that's great and i like it it's going to have a bit of an effect on people uh, especially when it's in a frame as well so get on over here and we'll get right into this little puppy so i've just got a light line here i'm going to use for the the bit of the ground and the rest will be all painted in as such now i want to start off with some of the craft white just to get that background blurred in uh, so I want enough, oh what a hard night he had. I want to start off with the craft white and not too much retarda in this because I only want to, if anything, blend where the ground's going to meet the misty sky colour. So I want to grab me put it on a brush and give that a good mix and then we'll have a nice base coat on the canvas ready to put all our appropriate colours. Okay, I'll get at the top here and I'll just crisscross this into the canvas to get it spread over everywhere as much as I can. Beautiful brush just to spread the paint. Look at it, it doesn't muck around. Well, that's pretty much roughly where my ground's going to be, so I'll mark that on the edge because I want to get this all painted in and we are going to blend quickly a sky colour there and the ground colour where it's misting into it. Now I'm just stroking this left and right like a pure gentleman just to get all that white within the canvas there. Go back and forth. And so long as you finish it off, just like a gentleman and stroke it like that. Look at that, so easy, so effective and beautiful. So down here, I've got my antique green. I'm gonna get a bit of that into the mix. It's a green gray actually. And I've got some more toning gray because I don't want, uh, gray and I don't want it that green I want it a bit of both so I'm going to mix up the both of those I've just wiped my brush let's get them mixed up and we want this nice and having that green gray now I'm going to mix it how's that going I might grab some of this and put in there the color on the canvas is going to lighten it up as well and this has got to blend down into the bottom half of the painting where the ground cover and the ground color is going to be so my ground's about here. I'll just lightly do it so you see where I'm where I'm at. I'll get this all crisscrossed into this white. Look at that beautiful, it's like distant, misty. And we can add lighter values or darker values to this if we feel we need. Now see how that white is allowing all this color to merge onto the canvas. It just looks very artistic. Stroke that that way like that and get it all ironed out nicely. The tip of the brush you use, as you go more to the tip, it blends it. It's great for that, especially the way I paint. These brushes work great for the way that I do my blending and apply applying the paint to the canvas. There we go. Now we'll put this brown colour down the bottom. So I'm just going to grab some simple burnt umber. Okay, bit there. And I need another putter on a brush. I'll use this one so we can get all this blended in there. So I'm just going to pick that up. There's no retarder in this. It's going to go lighter when it hits the canvas. I want to get this right at the bottom. Bring it up to our green. Bring it up to there like that. Grab some more on your brush. Darker values of it. Now get it up to the green. And then I want to, where this is joining, that's where we want the mist and the, the lightness to happen. So. I'll, I'll bring that up into the green slowly with the tip of the brush. I'm not going to go down the bristles anymore because it'll start to add more paint. There's no paint here, but there's paint there. Okay, let me look in there. That's quite misty enough. Simple, and that's something I know you can do, and especially if you had a lot of practice. Okay, we're ready to put our trees in. Before I do, I want to try and glare up some more up here so it's just not too boring colors so i'm just going to pick up some more of the craft white let me put her on a brush and 
while this is still wet, we'll get mainly the top and around here a little bit brighter, lighter, if it's gonna work for us. So just picking up there like that, crisscross it into there. So it's pretty much all the top and anticipating down here. Now I'm gonna to go to the tip of the brush and go again and start from there and just blend that across. Stroking it left and right. And with a bit of luck, we can see some kind of lighter value in there. Now, I'm ready to dry it, but before I do, I'll probably try and get a bit more shadow and depth in this bottom half here. So I've got my burn number there, and I'll also get a bit of it and mix up with some black as well. So I've got light, medium, and dark value of this, just so as when I put the trees in, I'm not gonna be trying to paint this around trees. The trees will sit over it and look normal. So I wanna pretty much get mainly from here now, I haven't dried it, and that's why I'm doing this now to see if I do have to dry it. It's very wet, you can see there. Get that off there. So I'm going to dry that probably halfway just to make it rubbery, because it's just not happening, see? Okay, I've given that a dry. Um, see, if you just go and put your drop leaves and your trees on this light color here, they're gonna look floaty, so that's why we need our bits of dark. We can just sort of scrumble it in any old way. And this can be sat down as well with bits of um, medium value as well. So I pretty much just want bits of this. There's the shape of the land, so my brush strokes are kind of going in those shapes as well. I want mainly this corner here dark. And see how it looks ippity-appity at the moment? Go a little bit lighter towards that where it's fading. Just like this, it's dry, that's why it's tearing across the paint like this. But this is gonna be the depth. Okay, we got that value. Now I'm just going to pick up the, the raw burn umber on its own without the black in it, so it'll be the medium color, okay? So I'm just going to try and sit some of this black down. So it's, see we're gonna blend it into the lighter color with this. And if we need more light colors to sit some of this burn number down, we can do that as well. So I'm just pretty much coming within here and blending it down like so, using the brush with the shape of the land. I'm just using a flat brush. I just grab anything I can get my hands on. Um, and once we put our leaves and little ground foliage here, we've got enough dark colors here to create the depth, which was what makes a painting look alive when it's got the depth there. Some light up there, a little bit fading away, a little bit fading away, like that. My microphone wasn't in before when I did this. Now what I wanna do is start getting the distant trunks, real tall ones up in here, and bring the main ones forward. So I want to start off with the little light distance ones, and they don't have to be in focus. So I've got me um, green here, my antique green, which is a green grey, really. How's that going to go? Nice and light in the background. There we go. Get some of this. Because I put white in the background, of the green, you know how I glared it up, this is gonna show on it for some background trees. And I don't know, let's say we can get something way in here in the distance, just put something right in the guts there. It's not the thickness I want it yet, but it's something there. We'll get another one about here somewhere. Okay, and maybe something coming off the side here. About there. Don't go too fat because these are in the distance. All right, now we want to. I'm resting my pinky on there and just kind of getting that brushed in. I'll let the top fade away. 
don't want them too fat because they're birch trees, so I might have to change the brush up a bit. We'll see how we go. These are going to be pushed back with forward trees, so don't be too particular. If you watch the video a couple of times, you'll see why and what you can get away with when you're painting something, what's going to go in front of it, what's going to sit it back, and so forth. Now with the same colour, I've just got a script liner, and I'm just going to kind of get some detail-y branches from some of these, twisting it, trying to make them skinnier and get that birch look about them. So coming from the middle of the trunk, twist it, get something going there just so it looks busy in the background. Um, I'll fix some of these trunks up as well as I go if I feel. That's what art's all about, adjusting and fine tuning things. Get something up here, right up the top of there, right up to the top of the painting, twist it, create something up the side there, nice and skinny as you go up. If anything, these branches are going upwards, they're not bending right down. All right. All right, we've got enough background trees. We're gonna bring some more forward. And with this green, we're gonna start mixing a bit of the, the brown to create the darker value of our forward birch trunks. Okay, so I'm just opting to use this colour and I want to work from say where me um, trees are going to come forward and I want to put something right about here now, get this one, so this one's a bit darker and he's more in focus and closer so I'll get him all the way up there. Now I want him a lot fatter than that as well, so I'll pick up some more paint and just bring the brush up, twisting it so you're getting the edge reasonably sharp without broken edges on it and then we'll gradually come forward some more with some more darker trees and with that distinct birch uh, markings bring it there like that and I'll put just I want to sink that so I want to get this one about here right there twisting it, let it break, whatever, you get the backbone of it in there, you got the backbone of it in there, in there, and then we will continue to build that one up. Get him nice and fat. And nice sharp edges coming right up the top of the painting where we intended it to go. I'm gonna grab some of the antique green just whack in some light foliage as well so the foreground foliage will come into play so some of these I just want some just light foliage on them I've never seen a real birch tree in real life to be quite honest so I only go by pictures what I've seen other artists do as well so we'll get some of this kind of stuff happening Hopefully it's going to make sense because the foreground stuff's going to have um, uh, foliage in it as well. So is the ground. Where are we? Get some of all this. Just I don't want to bring this tree foliage in front of that brown one because it's further back. You know what I mean? So it won't quite make sense if you did that. Okay, I'll probably just give the brush a bit of a wipe and I want to pick up some of the, um, the darker value I have here and get some of this lightly in those middle trees, these brown ones here, because they're going to need some darker values. Now, now I haven't dried it. I want to see if I need to dry it, which I probably will because it's scratching the buggery out of it. So I'll give them a bit of a dry. Okay, I've given them a dry. I'm picking up the burn umber mixed with some of the black just to find some... 
shadow within these. And then I'll grab that lighter colour again if I feel I've gone and put too much dark in it. Just up the trunk. Not, not so much at the top because the top's going into the mist. But I'm just using a flat brush. Get some of this in that one. And where did the other one? Oh, here we go. This one here. See that wet bit there? It's... Grab some more water in that paint. Just may I'm 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 gone mainly for the um the burn umber, just a little bit of black in it, not too dark, because we're gonna have a couple of darker ones in front of these, okay? So we don't want them to clash. And then we will put the um what do you call it? I'll marry that to the ground a little bit more where the dark is, see there? See that light, keep that light, sink it back with this dark in front. Same here. This is real painting, this just getting your brush and you're not stamping, you're actually painting, you're doing something creative with your brush. And like I'll grab the lighter value just so you know what I mean. Not too much green in. Because this is the darker forward tree now. So this is creating the lighter colour. Then I can put those distinct birch marks over it. See that, how I'm sinking it back with that antique green a little bit? So now, oh it's too much, let's let that lighten up a bit. It's darker, it's forward more than those back ones. Just a very little there, just subtle. Okay, I've given that a light dry now. I've just got the black, more black than burn umber, but black and burn umber mixed up. And I do want to get, or we'll try and get those, um, blackness the foreground is going to be more detailed than this this is just the background one but i'm trying to get some um, depth within these little dots coming across we'll sink that branch back so it looks like it's coming from the back put a little bit in him and some of these scallopy bits here you can get the dark in there is that one looking not too bad it's scratchy it's working and the same here a little bit on that branch there and then we'll bring the trunk right in front of it just to sit it back okay and get these reasonably scratchy but dark bit of there something like that I'm just winging it here I'm really not really Let's just hope it'll look like a birch when I'm done. Okay, I've got some sap green here. I'll grab some white. And I just want this very pale for those other foregrounder trees that I've put in. Just to give some kind of, a um, bit more pale, it's too green. Um, to give them some foliage gap filling stuff as well. So I'm mixing it up on my flat filbert. I'm grinding it off like so you can even wash it if you want and then I chisel it on both sides like that okay and back up here we can sort of give some kind of foliage branch leafy stuff on these something in front of the tree there and you can probably use this as well if you do have any if it actually if it if it ugly bits you want to hide, you can hide them with this as well. I'm getting a bit more of the darker sap green now because it seems to be a bit too bright. So don't put as much white in it like I did. Get that in front of the tree there, coming down there. And we can probably have some cascading here from behind it. Gap filling that in course coming in front a bit all right I want to put some trees in front so I'm grabbing the green gray and some gray there just to get the gray color that I'm after uh, for the foreground tree and we're gonna put the black over this so this is pretty much gray so what I want to do is start from here with this one and this one can sort of come up right up here right up 
Now see how it's clashing with those background ones? It's got to be darker. So I've grabbed a bit darker grey uh, and I might even put a little bit of black in it just to get it a little bit darker because I feel it's not quite dark enough. I don't want it clashing with the stuff at the back because see here, there we go. And this tree is going to come all the way in front, pretty much there. I'll get the backbones of him done first, pretty much there, coming up. And then I can colour the ed from the edges in, so about there. And we'll probably put another one about here, coming from here, right up the guts, straight past there. So where are we? They're going right up the top of the painting there because these are closer, they're more forward. So I've got one side of the tree painted in and we'll get the other side painted in. So we'll come about here. Scratch him in. And this will be dried and appropriately blacked with the birch markings on it. Now I've given these, let's say there's two main trees there. I'm gonna get the black color, which is still here. And we wanna start putting that flavor in the trees. So I'll start from here and um, let's see what we can get. I'm gonna pretty much go on one edge. Uh, birch, birch they, see there, if anything, they're long going across the trunk like this. Let's see what we can do. Getting there, and I'll fix the edge up later. Because these are pretty dark, they're forward, and um, the grey's got to be knocked down quite a bit. I'm going to just mix and match it up a bit, play with it, and see what I can get. Now I want to get the edge of that tree. Kind of. I did a birch tree years ago, way before I was filming, and I've looked at the picture quite a few times. I thought it's so. I'm really happy with the way it turned out. I don't know how I did it, um, but trying to replicate it is feeling impossible. So I'll pull this across like that through there. That'll get our hopefully our so on the edge of the tree and pull it across in kind of bands if I can, try and distort them. And I can go back over um, with the, the lighter color if I've destroyed it too much. So let's come from the edge and kind of bring it around the tree, there we go. Bring it around the tree, make it, because I do know, I'll do that later -wards. I do know they have some darker, let's say like eyes within them. So let's say you've got the bands there and you can probably, if you can, get some, if I can get some in there, <laughs> some dark eyes in there, you know, like that. That's kind of looking a bit birchier now. So I'll go sideways instead of the way I was going before. Coming around a tree, around a tree, getting those bands and some, I'll get the actual black and um, I will put the um, eyes in, in them, I'll call them eyes. I don't know what they're called, it's, they probably have a proper name. See, I'll bring that branch in front of that one, that one in front of, down behind that one, that one in front of that one, and so on. That's better, isn't it, than instead of going all over the place. Now I'll get some actual darker colour just to make up for his eyes and the real depth within it. So I had some black and I'll try and make these um, just with pure black these eyes. Let's see if I can create some darker values on top of that brown. As we stick 
Are they looking all right? Can you see them? Then I'm just doing some what I feel they look like from what I've seen in pictures. Just pure black this is. Can probably get some of it right along the edge there as well. Uh, I'm not sure how high up the tree these eyes go, but we'll do it all over anyway. Okay, grabbing some forest green, just from about this height down, I want darker foliage coming within this canopies here, something coming off here. Okay, uh, get a bit of water on that so it's gonna flow better. So this is just pure, let's, where's the edge of the painting? We'll get something coming off as well. This is just pure uh, forest green. You want it nice and dark. I can even put a little bit of black in it if I want, just to blackulate it down a bit. So it's really dark. You can see here it's a bit see-throughy. that and then coming in front of that one going up it a little bit if you want uh, coming forward there we go there and we can make some more probably all the bottom here bits of foliage bits of small shrubs on the ground as well these are going to make up for and we'll get some sink that trunk back where you welded it to the ground at the front as well I'm just going to give this, where'd it go, somewhere here, somewhere, give this his little skinny trunk, the one I'll put in there. Get it nice and wet and trace off where those branches are, something like that. Okay, that green that I had, where is it, forest green, I want to grab some of that again. Um, and mix with the cad yellow light so there's my cad yellow light and i want to start adding the green well that's plenty just get a nice vibrant bright green to highlight those foliage leaves that we just put in there so let's start on the floor here and i want to kind of where's my stick i want to kind of just get bits I'm just getting it trained on the brush there and sit it on top of all that black you just put okay and we're going to come and this is going to make the actual foliage that's on the ground okay where's that looking you can see how that's looking how the black's helping it now this little tree we did here now did I dry it Pretty sure I did, but I don't think I might have dried it enough. Just want some of this light green cascading over that dark stuff. Right around there, make shapes out of it. Have fun with it. Come in front there. And look at these little ones down here. See how we'll, we'll set these ones back as well. Right, right there, green. Sitting on that dark. Green, sitting on that dark. Now I've got some of the sap green with yellow. So it's a more yellowy green. I'll just see how yellow we are. And I want to start yellowing up some of this now but not too much just little bits of this now don't go over all that green that you did with this this has got to be less stamped footprint so it'll just create the um, illusion of light hitting the top coming down through or whatever how's that looking yeah you can see so you've got the dark green under it I did a little test run up there off camera now I want to create this bring it down and let the light just 
hit the top of it and fade away. That's what's going on in my mind. Same as this one, a little bit of light on there, there, and this one's got the light hitting it, and a little bit there. No, I didn't dry it. You need to dry every bit, that way you're not gonna get a mudding up effect happening with your work. Okay, it's important to dry your work when you're doing this with acrylics. It's foliage, different highlights and darker colors. Uh, we've got some down here. Now with these bits, I'm gonna add a bit more yellow. So that's the color I had. I just got some more cad yellow light and I'm just mixing it. And it's still a green, but it's a very yellowy green. And up in these sections, we'll see just how it will look if it's a bit more on the yellowy side. Just here and there, right on the top arch of it and break it up to another clump. So pretty much everything in the tree, we're getting a bit more yellowy highlight in it. Right in front of that tree, look at that. Leaving the darks there. And it adds depth and that sense of realism when you're looking at it. It's very easy to get carried away highlighting stuff. I know I've done it a lot in my past. This tree here can have more on it. Okay, you can keep going on with that until the cows come home. I'll just sign it down here. Now, check out the links in the description below. Share, like, and subscribe. Message me on Facebook if you want to purchase the blending brushes I use or if you ever want to buy one of my paintings. And all payments are done through PayPal. Normally I sign it on the right hand side, but it's too much foliage there, so I'll just do it here. And Steve's little paw print. Now we'll whack a frame on this. There we go. There we go. That's not too shabby in a frame, is it? It looks quite nice in the frame. We've got distance, fog, mist, whatever in our birch trees and just some luscious growth ready to start growing for the new year. And I know something like that, you can do it. All right, that was fun and exciting, something different. And um, be sure to check out the links in the description below and message me if you have any questions and they will be addressed in my next Friday Night Live from your question being asked. And be sure to tell your friends if you like what I'm doing. But if you don't like what I'm doing, you make sure you tell everybody, hey, all the best, goodbye, good luck, and good on you.